Hey everybody, if you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. That's where I'm providing the latest programming tutorials on everything from beginner to advanced. There's a one size uh, fits all where you can just get the all access and it includes all my courses that I have available. So it's like 15 plus. And it also includes any sort of uh, new courses that I add in the future. Hey everybody, what's up? Alright, so in this video, what we're going to talk about is the latest in WebGL and what's going on right now with the WebGL community. And unfortunately, why WebGL is going to be dying here in the very near future. All right, so what is WebGL? If we look at WebGL, the actual definition from Wikipedia, its original author is the Mozilla Foundation, but uh, WebGL is actually handled by this nonprofit, Kronos Group, which, for it's such a weird name, but they've been around for 20 plus years now, and they're literally behind one of the most um, important shader languages out there for graphics cards. So basically, in a nutshell, if you fast uh, or if you go in reverse about 10 years or maybe even 20 years or so, there were two graphics libraries that were out there. There were OpenGL and then there were Direct3D, which is Microsoft's um, graphics engine. Now, with OpenGL, that ended up being the winner when they decided, hey, we want to use this specification, this API, and we want this to now work inside of browsers so that browsers can access the graphics card and provi provide like... Um, much more faster capabilities when it comes to rendering, you know, 3D animations and video games and things like that. So as soon as WebGL came out and everybody started tapping into it, libraries like 3JS started cropping up and, and they tap into WebGL and it allows you to simply not have to write as much code to do a lot of different things from playing basic video games, like I said, to running animations. So some of these WebGL games are actually quite complicated. When we used to run games in the browser, we had to use it. We had to do it through uh, Flash Professionals. I don't know if you guys remember that, but Adobe Flash, like that was how we ran all of our video games when we tried to have games that ran inside the browser. So basically in 2010, when Steve Jobs decided to say to hell with Flash Professional, we're not going to support it at all anymore. We started moving over to HTML5 video, and then now with WebGL, we started doing our graphics uh, directly with WebGL. So if we look at the gameplay here of this particular game, like it, it's just, it's not very good. Um, it, you know, it's very basic and it's kind of choppy and just not very good mechanics at all. But uh, that's kind of the story with really any WebGL video game out there. I, I'm hard pressed to find any successful WebGL game. I know that there's a handful of them that are considered to be successful, but literally just a small handful when you compare that to all the other video game platforms and engines that are porting to all, uh, all those different things like PlayStation 4 and PC, Linux, Mac, Windows. All right, so we've had these libraries. We've had coders now writing stuff in WebGL for a long time. We have entire frameworks that are built around WebGL to try to make it easier to do this type of stuff. But then you end up getting an axe just thrown down on you by the Unreal Engine community. They completely drop support for HTML5, so they're no longer going to try to port any of their stuff over to WebGL. Now, they say that the community edition is still available, but you can see that there's not a whole lot going on with the community. So once Unreal drops official support for this, like that, you're not going to be able to port Unreal over to, to HTML5, uh, WebGL probably at all going forward. But even if you could, the problem is, is that we are now um, understanding that WebGL is not going to be the future. So whatever is going on with WebGL right now is probably at its peak. And the new successor is something called WebGPU. So why do we need this new graphics API that's going to replace WebGL, which was really the browser's implementation of OpenGL? And the reason why is because modern day graphics architecture does not work well with the Open uh, OpenGL specification uh, and therefore, the WebGL specification uh, doesn't work very well with modern har har uh, architecture either. Uh, another thing, too, is we have Vulkan, which is going to be th the successor of OpenGL. And um, WebGPU works with Vulkan uh, much, much better. So the speed performance increases are anywhere from about two to eight times WebGL. So who is behind this? It's actually a bunch of people. So here's the WebGPU shading language. This is something that you can see just in October of 20, uh, October 22nd that they're writing this thing. So um, this is the status of where they are. Right now, they're actually trying to decide on the shader language for WebGPU. And it's really going to boil down to either the Kronos group or some other group uh, that is going to handle that. When I say some, some other group, there's literally one other group. I can't think of their name right now, but they're literally in contention. Those two are in contention. One of those two are going to be handling the shader language of WebGPU. 
So you also have a lot of people from Mozilla, Intel, AMD, all those big companies are involved in this new specification. And again, it's going to work very similar to WebGL. It's just going to be much more performant. And you might ask about the performance things. I'm not a graphic. I don't write these shader languages or, or have anything to do with this. But uh, from what I understand, the main difference between WebGPU versus WebGL is the shared state system in WebGL is rather large and big. Whereas WebGPU, they're now breaking things up uh, in a much more parallel concurrent uh, and parallel and concurrent processes to manage like the overall state and everything. So basically, it's just from the core written to be much more uh, performant by spreading out the work. Also, I should mention that that work spread out is actually spread out directly to the GPU, the graphics processing unit, which is much faster than a uh, the CPU. Um, also, I should mention this because if this is accurate on Wikipedia, this is something I didn't know, but it says WebGPU uses its own shading language called WGSL, which is trivially translatable to Spur V, which is really what OpenGL uses, uh, WebGL, I believe. And then it says this choice is a compromise among the three proposals. Uh, so by Apple, by uh, Mozilla, which is really Kronos, and then, um, uh, you know, Apple Safari. So this is a compromise. It's got its own shader language. All right, so where are we with all of this? Um, my recommendation is that if you're spending any time in WebGL, that you know that it's going to be a dying thing, that there's not going to be a whole lot of opportunity for you to be able to take that code in that game and make a bunch of money with it in the browser. Uh, it's not going to be the best way forward. So until those things are actually porting over to WebGPU, I would just go native game development. And then also you can see here, this is the latest on um, this new standard. So WebGPU, it's only working right now on Mac and Windows, and that's limited features at the moment. So this thing is not production ready at all. It's probably at least a year away from being production ready. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I just want to go ahead and explain. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys about WebGPU so you guys know what it is and, um, and know how that compares to WebGL. And then uh, if that's going to in impact your decision on if you're doing any sort of graphics processing in the browser. Also, I'll drop a link to the working group, uh, the GitHub page for the working group, in the description tab below so you guys can check that out to hear directly from the members as to what's going on uh, if you're interested. All right, everybody, that's all I got today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop that. I appreciate it. And have a good day. Bye.